Good afternoon. How are we all doing? Wonderful. Excited to be here in DC. See so many familiar faces. It's become my second home of late. We'll talk about that more in a little. So um, normally don't have this great weather and all the cherry blossoms out though. So thought uh, a few of you might be outside enjoying the sunshine. Anyway, um, enough of the small talk. I'm, I'm here to talk about 5G. Excited to uh, you know follow on a great set of of speakers talking about the opportunity here in the US um, and what 5G can bring to our consumers, to our society, to our economy, and to the country overall. Um, I'm also super excited to talk about our deal. And Michelle gave me a great tee up. Um, I am gonna spend some time talking today about the combination of T-Mobile and Sprint and why that is so important to driving forward on a 5G mission and 5G leadership you know, here in the US. Something very dear and close to my heart where I spend most of my waking hours and days these days uh, talking about and, and working through our deal. So um, I have in true T-Mobile fashion a video um, to play for you, but I have to, I'm told, put up this legal disclaimer first and I am not gonna try and read it. So, uh, but you guys have seen it. Uh, but pin back your ears. Um, here's a little flavor for you of uh, the new T-Mobile. Today, Americans in many places have too few options. And consumers often pay too much for too little. The other guys want to protect the status quo, stifle innovation, and charge a premium, while offering 5G only to the few. But we don't need to settle for the status quo. The new T-Mobile will supercharge competition and bring unprecedented 5G connectivity across the nation and we won't charge a dollar more for it. This consolidation will lead to lower prices. The combined company will challenge other broken industries, forcing them to respond. And we will create thousands of new jobs for Americans. Blue collar, white collar job, jobs in urban, suburban and rural America. Most of all, we will ensure our country's tech leadership in the 5G era. This is the kind of network needed to fuel the next wave of mobile internet innovation in the United States. And nowhere is that more important than rural America. Bringing this revolutionary technology to everyone, everywhere. There we go, you can applaud if you like. <laughs> I thought I'd demand it, so. Um, hopefully that gives you a flavor for what this new combination of T-Mobile and Sprint is all about. I'll move on to you know, the 5G story in a second, but you saw it up there, it's about competition. Competition in a new era of 5G. It's about building out a 5G footprint with both breadth and depth of service. And I'll talk about the use cases and the capabilities that this network can bring. It's about bringing greater competition, not just for wireless services, but for fixed services, especially in areas across rural America. I'm gonna show you maps, I'm gonna show you how we can deliver that and why that's so important you know, for this deal. And last but not least, we're gonna create jobs. There's a lot of noise out there about how combining these two great businesses is gonna reduce jobs. John put a blog out this morning, we're gonna create 11,000 new jobs as we combine these two companies and mature this network. So, a lot of things happening you know, with T-Mobile and Sprint, but an incredibly exciting opportunity and one that's very, very critical for this story of 5G. So we've heard a lot today about 5G leadership, where we are, where we're not. We're in the blocks of the race. That's where we are, if we're honest with ourselves. This race has barely begun. And so there's gonna be an intense, an intense phase of running this race and investing in these networks. And you've heard about what's necessary to do that. The spectrum resources that can provide you a breadth of experience as well as a depth of experience. And we are up against formidable competition. The Chinese machine has incredible momentum. They may be slow getting out of the blocks but they are gonna run a very, very fast race. And if we sit on our laurels and sit on our hands and believe this race is won, we're not saying that, 
But if we believe that's the case, we will lose this race really badly. So we have a lot to do, and there's a lot that can come with the new T-Mobile as we put this together. So real quick, where are we on the deal? Um, you can see the road there. I wanted to just reiterate how important this deal is and how optimistic we are about approval. We are very optimistic about this combination and its approval status. We've been at this a while. There's some major milestones on here. We started this almost a year ago. And you look at some of the major milestones, there's some bad football analogies have been used by some folks about our deal of late. I tell you what this is all about. This is moving the ball up the field. That's what T-Mobile and Sprint are doing together with the regulatory agencies, with the states, with all those that need to understand the power and capability of this combination. And we've had some huge wins. We are scoring big points. The CFIUS approval at the end of last year was a huge deal. We've sat down with all of the agencies involved in that approval process, and we've talked and signed up for what will be a robust and very secure 5G future. There is a massive amount of work that goes into that one touchdown, one of the three major agencies that we need to secure approval with. And to date, we hear a lot about the state story. 16 of 19 states have approved this deal, and we are in deep, and strong and positive negotiation and discussion with all of the states, making sure they fully understand what this combination can bring to their consumers in their specific states and the benefits that we will bring. I'm delighted to report that today, the FCC clock started again. That 180 day time frame will expire first week of June, somewhere in that time frame. But the clock is moving again. We are back on track. Our momentum continues. And we will answer every question that is put in front of us. If it's about jobs, if it's about our network, if it's about the investment that these two companies are committing uh, to do together. So with that said, let me talk a little bit about Spectrum. And you've heard this from several of the speakers uh, before. Michelle touched on this, Ken touched on this too. And I do want to bust a couple of myths while I'm up here. All of the Spectrum bands are going to be needed for 5G. You need millimeter wave in the dense urban areas. You need mid-band, Ken covered that. That's how you deliver a breadth of mobility and experience in a 5G world. And you need low band. You have to have connectivity. You have to have that across all of rural America. You have to have that for the IoT and critical services that we talk about so much that 5G can bring. It's been said before, no company in the US has this set of resources. Nobody does. And the world has aligned with this strategy. We were the first company to talk about rolling out 5G in low band. The industry was led by a millimeter wave story. But we all know, engineers in the room, anybody who studied this industry, it is basic math and physics. You cannot cover 3 million square miles of the US with millimeter wave. It is physically impossible. You can try and tell me the world is flat all you want, I tell you, it's not, right? And it's going to be super, super hard to make that happen, if not impossible. I don't care how many small cells you build. You have to do that, though. It's a tool in the toolkit. Our combination brings together those three sets of spectrum in a unique way. No company can do this today in the US. Not T-Mobile, not Sprint, not Verizon, and not AT&T. Nobody can do this today. Now. Does more spectrum become available over time? Sure it does. But if you want to win a 5G race, which is now in the blocks, in the blocks, companies are moving out with massive mid-band deployments in China and Korea. We don't have that asset available to us in the US. This combination allows us to commit and invest and drive investment across all of the necessary bands that 5G needs. So it's a unique opportunity. Let me show you what that looks like. So here's the T-Mobile story. Everybody says, well, you're building 5G. We are. We are building out 5G. We've committed to build out a nationwide 5G footprint in 2020. It gives you, an, you know, an idea and a view of what this is going to look like. So the Sprint build. Sprint is primarily a mid-band build in 2.5 gig. And you heard from Michelle the constraints they face and where that's going to be. They're getting started, but that's what this looks like. Now, what, has happened, what happens when you put this together? This is what happens. 
That's $40 billion of investment. That is massive spectrum across all bands coming together in a way that would generate enormous capacity and major speeds. Average speeds, 400 megabits per second across the US. The capacity that gets generated. If you compare what we can offer as the two companies today against what we can do in 2024, it's eight times, eight. If you look at what the two standalone companies can deliver in 2024 against the combined, it's two times. So maybe that's the fair comparison. But this isn't a one plus one equals two. It's not a one plus one equals three. It's a one plus one equals four. And that's why this is so important. The physics, the dense network with massive spectrum capability and 5G efficiency to boot creates something that will be completely unique in the US marketplace. I've been building networks for 25 years in the US. This will blow your socks off. That's what's coming with the new T-Mobile, an incredible combination of sites, capacity, and spectrum, and an experience that will be second to none. And lower prices. We create massive, massive capacity with our 5G factory, and we push that to the US consumer so they can enjoy these services. No premiums from T-Mobile. We've already committed we will maintain and lower prices in the era over the coming years as we build this network. So real quick, and I think I'm almost out of time. I talk a lot, don't I? Sorry. Um, here's the comparison for you, if you missed it. So T-Mobile on its own, Sprint on its own, and then the wow factor when we combine. So let's talk about why that's important. I like to call this this arc of use cases. And all the things you heard Nicholas talk about it, you've heard the other speakers talk about it, you'll hear more about it this afternoon. But everything from fixed broadband, which can be revolutionary in a 5G era, all the way across to the IoT use cases. Heavy data consumption, maybe much lighter data consumption. And what does this look like when you inject devices into this piece? And you look at how are these use cases going to get um, excited and revolutionized with, uh, with 5G services. So we know the fixed space, massively exciting. The things that we can do in a rural environment, T-Mobile delivering effectively 10 million homes of fixed broadband. Doesn't sound, does that sound a lot? Maybe not. If you think there's just over 100 million households in the US, it's a big number where there's no competition and no choice today. Massive improvement even inside the first five years, let alone what we can do after that. The IoT space opening up with low band 5G in a way that nobody else can do today. Nobody has that 5G low band vision. And then this piece in the middle, the consumer piece, how we're going to revolutionize the consumer experience and the smartphone experience. That's the piece that really excites me. We need 300 million Americans using 5G services every day, everywhere they go. Yes, in their home. Yes, in their factory or office building. But what about when they're out on the street and they're mobile? That's why you require this capability, this throughput, this capacity. So we can move from an era where we're running around doing tens of megabits per second on our phones to hundreds. We can have a world of intense gaming, new video capabilities, augmented reality through wearables and any other devices that you want to imagine that will revolutionize customer experience. Latency in these networks, here's latency for you. I want to see where my flight is tonight. I take my phone out, I look at this piece of glass, I, sc I, sc I do all this stuff, right? If I had my wearables on, I'd say, when's my flight? Just comes up, pops up in AR in my field of vision with my wearables. You don't believe that's going to happen? Sounds like sp science fiction. It's going to happen inside the next five years, guaranteed. We are all going to be working around and the internet is going to be something that we don't dial up or look into or scroll around on a piece of glass. It's going to be in your face. And we're going to have networks that have the latencies and the capacities and the speeds to deliver on that experience and transform what 5G means to the US citizens and the US consumers. OK, I'm over time. I've said enough. I'll close. We won't stop. That's our mantra at T-Mobile. You probably gathered that from me. I get pretty excited. Sorry about this stuff. Um, but hopefully you understand what we're about. We're about a new T-Mobile driving towards a 5G future at a phenomenal pace. And I guarantee you this, it is a pace that none of our competitors in the US can match. None of them. They don't have the assets. 
We have the assets, we have the investment, we have the story, we have the motivation, and we are going to go do this and deliver a transformative experience for the US marketplace and win this 5G race. Thank you.